we can move on to, I guess, the business of the day. So Mitchkov's ELC is done, and we can get into that and the performance bonuses and everything. It's kind of what I laid out last week, the Class A and B um, bonuses that ELC eligible players uh, have kind of built in. You can achieve up to four of those bonuses in the Class B if you do one of them. But those are like, yeah, you have a fucking star player in your hands if you achieve a Class B. It's up to, what, three and a half million in bonuses, I think? Um, yeah, I believe it would max out. It could theoretically max out at like four, four, five or something. I think okay. in terms of like cap hit plus bonuses, I think that's the way it adds up. And I asked, I asked Briere about that yesterday. If he's got the bonuses like maxed out, he's basically like almost. So I, I don't have the specific details of the contract yet, but it certainly seems like they maxed him out as much as they possibly could. Makes sense. Uh, we expected this, and it's just sort of a thing. It's maybe while they're going to want to open up a little more cap space or keep some free so it doesn't roll over to next year. But we all saw this coming. It's, yeah, sure. It's a nine, what, 975 cap hit now. And then nine, 950, I believe. 950. I think 950 is the max. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, next year it's like, oh, it was actually three. Uh, okay. We'll see yeah. how yeah, we figure this out. Uh, but who cares? It's the team's best player. He's here. That's great. Uh, halfway that so. extension, yeah, that extension got done. Um, we have resolution in terms of no qualifying offer for Carter Hart, something we wanted to know about. Cam Atkinson bought out, another thing we figured was going to happen. Doesn't look like, I mean, it's not going to, Cal Peterson won't be. Uh, the Ryan Johansson thing, we just don't know how that's going to play out because we don't know if he's ever going to be deemed healthy. Um, draft is over, as I said. They took care of some business yesterday. EJ is back. Little surprising, Konechny not done yet. I realize, I realize it's one day. Like we're twenty, we're like thirty six hours into this thing with Travis Konechny, but um, him being eligible to sign. But it did seem like back in the winter they were like, yeah, we're gonna get this thing pre negotiated, and then on July 1st or shortly after, and we are still well within the shortly after range, obviously, it will be announced. Not announced yet, though. Is this a little surprising to anybody? So I have to say that it's, I mean, based on the contracts that we've seen signed over the last 36 hours, there's no fucking way he's getting nine. Like, I think that right. we can, like, if Reinhardt got eight and a half, Konechny's not getting more than Sam Reinhardt. Like, no fucking way. So I think maybe like things have kind of fallen in the Flyers' favor a little bit because if Konechny was looking for 8.8 .8 or whatever, like Danny Breers has to point at that one single contract to be like, no, dude, no, not well, a chance. I, I, I don't, I don't and, think it, I don't think it's that simple. But well, I no, do, but I, 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 Kelly, I do agree with you though that the 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 last couple of days the contracts that have been signed definitely do help the Flyers' position. Because the three contracts I'm thinking about are the Reinhardt deal, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, the Jake Gensel deal, actually. Mm. Because even though that is at a $9 million cap hit, that's a $9 million cap hit over seven years. Now, I don't, like, it would be hard, I think, for Konechny to argue that he has a better track record than Gensel. And if you're the Flyers, you could theoretically say, like, okay, well, if you want to say you're Gensel, then let's just that you're we're starting with a nine million dollar cap it. We can tack on the extra year to bring that cap it down, give you a little bit more money, and then boom, suddenly you're at a reasonable cap it for what we're looking for. And then today you have the Pavel Bushnevich contract, which is mm. six years, eight million dollars. It just seems like like if Konechny came into this negotiation, if his camp came into this negotiation looking for like well into the nines coming up on the tens. These contracts do not help his case from a comparison. No. But but Bill, it, to go back and answer to go back to answer your question, it really no, it doesn't surprise me. The, what I had heard was that the Flyers want to have this done ideally by the end of the summer. Like they don't want this to bleed into the season. But no, it, it seemed like over the last month or so that both sides came to the conclusion that like the gap was larger than I think both of them had hoped it would be. Um, but if that's coming from Konechny asking for close to 10 mil a year, you can understand why the Flyers are like, yeah, we're not going to sign that. Now, if Konechny was hoping that, you know, 
Reinhardt was going to hit the market. He wasn't going to resign with Florida. And then he was going to go take 10 mil somewhere. Well, that just got dashed because he stayed in Florida. He signed his deal. Like the thing with the Reinhardt stuff is that, while I'm sure that he gave them a little bit of a hometown discount. Like number one, he, these guys don't like to move. We talked about this. Number two, it's a cup team. They've been to this cup final two straight years. They won it this past year. He probably wants to stay. That's something taxes. that obviously, and then it taxes. I'm sure they, I'm sure it plays a bit of a role, but sure. like there, but in any case, I don't think connect can like the flyers can't just be like, well, Reinhardt's way better than you. And he took 8.6 or whatever. So you should take 7.8. Like there are going to be factors that play into this where connect is going to be like, well, like, come on, you got to understand that that's not an apples to apples situation, but it certainly does help the flyers leverage. Because if I'm the Flyers, I'm absolutely pointing to Reinhardt. And I'm saying, this guy scored 50-plus goals last year. He got 8.6 over eight years. So who are you to ask for 8.9? That's insane. And that's fair. Absolutely. And the counter to that, obviously. I remember this coming out like during uh, different uh, – among a, a few different Toronto, you know, some of their stars negotiations. And it's like, yeah, comparables don't really work. It's, it's what everyone's situation is like. I would take less if we were keeping a cup team together. I would take less if it was Tampa and we're trying to get the band back together, reassemble a cup team, and we have other stars who need uh, who need accommodating. But guess what? I'm the best player here, bitch. Like, you ain't got no one else to pay. I'm Travis Konechny. This is the only, like, Eric Johnson, Garnett Hathaway. These are your big off-season moves thus far. I'm worth more than, like, Maybe Reinhardt is in that situation just because of what he means to keep this thing together. That would be the counter. Uh, obviously, yeah. I have thought time and time again, if this is the money um, Travis Konechny wants, like trade him, trade him right fucking now, <laughs> like, you know, uh, but we'll, we'll see how this thing plays out. But I brought up like so many things got done over the last couple of days from uh, between the draft up through yesterday. Do you think there could be any outside factors, like something that they, something else they're hoping to get done before they're like, okay, and now we can think about this, you know, eight, nine, ten million dollar, whatever it's going to be, a year contract for Travis Konechny. Like, is there some other shoe maybe that's going to drop? Do you think that's a possibility first? I mean, I think there could be other shoes that drop, but I don't think it has a ton of bearing on the connecting negotiation. Like a GM is capable of doing more than one thing at the same time. Like he can be negotiating a Travis connecting contract with a few calls a day, or even just like a text message a day or whatever, wherever they are in the negotiation while also trying to work out trades, you know, f trading whoever on the roster, a hockey trade trading and you know, trying to dump wrestlers or Salina. Like, but I don't think those things necessarily preclude him from also working out a deal with connecting because the connecting deal won't kick in until 2025, 2026 anyway. Yeah. So it's not like they need to clear up cap space now to sign connect. Connect he's on his current contract for one more year. So anything they do in terms of trades or whatever, or other signings or anything like that, I don't think it's going to have that much bearing on what they do with connect it just may take some time to work out this deal with Konechny because the two sides are still far enough apart that they're not ready to sign a deal and we're still ways away from camp so the urgency hasn't set in yet. But if you're asking if, you, if I think there's another shoe to drop on this offseason, Briere more or less said yesterday that he's trying, that he's he's trying to work out trades, that you know he didn't say he's definitely going to do a trade, but it's abundantly clear that he ain't done, or at least yeah. he doesn't want – he's not at pencils down moment yet. He's still working. And the one thing that did, I'm working on an article about this, about the Flyers cap situation. The one thing that did catch my attention was I asked Danny if they've accepted that they're going to be tapping into long-term injured reserve this year. Now that, you know, now that Atkinson has been bought out, they know Mitch Koff's here. He signed to the ELC. Like, have you accepted that, LTIR is going to be a thing because if you look at their cap situation right now, the two guys left that they have to sign are Bobby Brink and Yeager Zamora. Those are your two. If you give them, if you don't try to lowball them like crazy, you're going to go over the cap ceiling, like counting 
the Ryan Johansson and the Ryan Ellis contracts in full. Like you're going to go over unless you just basically, you know, try to basically screw those two guys over so you can stay under the cap, which maybe they'll try to do. Maybe that's an option. But most likely, once they sign those two guys, they're going to be over the cap. So you've got two options here. Your option number one is use LTIR. That's the easy one because you got two guys in Ellis and Johansson who can't play or Ellis can't play. Johansson maybe won't play. We don't really know which. But in any case, they both probably can be put on LTIR. So in terms of functional cap space, you're still fine. You can open up the allowance if you need to. But if you don't want to use LTIR, and Briere again reiterated yesterday, he does not want to do it. Then it becomes, okay, how do you how do you get yourself into a position where you don't have to use it? He basically said Zamula and Fedotov are going to be Mitchkov's buddies next year. So they ain't dumping Zamula. Like he's he's here. I cannot imagine they dump Brink because he's a talented young player. And that was part of the reason why they bought out Cam Atkinson was to give Bobby Brink a regular shot. So that means that if you're if you don't want to tap an LTIR, that means that you're trying to work on something to move out some space. And that's where I wonder about Risto. I don't know if they can do it. I I am I am not exactly optimistic that anyone will be willing to trade for Risto line and after the injury plague year he had. That said, and this is this is fair point, it does seem like around the league, big defensemen are back in vogue. That yep. teams want the big boys again. That that's the thing. And maybe, just maybe, they can find a team that didn't get the big defenseman they wanted on July 1 and didn't trade for the guy they wanted on July 2. And maybe, just maybe, you can find someone who wants themselves a lightly used Rasmus wrist alignment because if you can get rid of them even if it even if it involves you taking like another contract back like say you take back like somebody on a two-year two million dollar a year deal that would allow you to re-sign Brink and it would allow you to re-sign Zamula and not have to use LTIR so if that's the plan if they really don't want to use LTIR I do wonder just how how much he's shopping wrist up no that's um when I saw the Tyler Myers deal, obviously, Zadorov, all those guys from uh, from the trades this summer or this past trade deadline and everything. I was, and also Zeev Booyam, when he fell to basically 13th in the draft, more, you know, yeah. I was like, yeah. I wonder how much, like, if everyone seems to collectively be going, yo, we need big defensemen. Well, we got one. We got sure one do. who. Kind so of big. factor in. So big. I do. So big. Like, I, I, it was much. just something I, I I was thinking about, and I'm uh, I'm I'm glad you brought that up. Before we move on to uh, to Danny's off season things that we need to accomplish next, I gotta tell you that today's show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and I think we've uh, we've all learned over the past few years that. Just having someone to talk to now and then, it can be very, very helpful. You know, life goes really, really fast. And whether it's needing to take a moment to celebrate your wins, make adjustments in your life, therapy can help you take stock of your progress, set achievable goals for the next few months, and uh, maybe even learn some coping skills, how to set boundaries, uh, empower the best version of yourself. Whatever it is uh, that you're looking to accomplish in your personal life, uh, BetterHelp is there for you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. You know, maybe you get matched with someone who right away you think you jibe with, and then maybe not so much. Maybe there's a a conflict of schedule, whatever it might be. No additional charge. You can change whenever you want. So take a moment, visit betterhelp.com slash PHLY to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash PHLY. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and I think uh, you might want to give it a try. If you're just looking to learn some coping skills, whatever it might be, set some boundaries in your personal life. I know that was huge uh, for my wife and I, we went through an issue with, uh, with our family a few years ago where it was just like, man, uh, 
there just has to be some sort of adjustment made here between us and oh, as I knock over my microphone, that's great. Um, <laughs> Not used to doing the remote shows, but yeah, betteratlp.com slash P-H-L-Y. All right. Um, so wait, now we real talk- quick. Sorry, okay. before we move on, someone asked in the chat for Charlie to explain the disadvantage of using LTIR, and I think that might be helpful for people that aren't super familiar with. I think yeah. so, too, because even now and then I get confused about why they just refuse to do it. So, uh, Charlie, take it away. Well, basically, the main disadvantage of using LTIR is that you're technically over the cap. It's not cap space. It is what is what is essentially called cap allowance. So you are not banking any cap space, which you do. So you bank, really, we think of the, the salary cap as like, it's $88 million. You can't spend more than $88 million in terms of the guys under contract. Really, the way it works is that you, you have a daily cap spend. So I haven't done the math of this year, but like just for, for ease of, of whatever. Let's just say that every day you are allowed to spend a combined total of $100,000 on player salaries every day of the league year. And let's say in day one, you spend $96,000. That means that that's $4,000 that in theory you could use later on in the year. And all the cap space you bank at the end of the year, that is essentially, you know, what you didn't spend off of the $88 million yearly cap. Now, why is that important? It's important for this reason, because if you have players that have bonuses and who, who, because when, like, for example, with Mave Mitchkov, his cap hit, his cap hold during the season is going to be nine, $950,000. That is his cap hit. That's how you stay under the cap. But with the bonuses, by the end of the year, the Flyers are very likely going to have to pay out like at least a mil and a half more to him in bonuses and have that fit under the cap too. Now, if every day they banked $6,000 a day, by the end of the year, they will have enough once we find out what bonuses Mitchkoff gets to pay off those bonuses and stay cap compliant for that season. If they don't, which they won't if they are on LTIR, because LTIR, as I said, again, it's an allowance. It's not like it's actual cap space. You're just allowed to go over the cap. So you don't bank shit when you're, when you're using it. If at the end of the year, the Flyers have $0 worth of bank cap space, and it turns out Mott Bay Mitchkov has $1.6 million worth of bonus money coming, well, guess what? That $1.6 million worth of bonus money goes onto your cap for the next year. And the more you kick that can down the road, the more likely the Flyers are going to have a lot of these bonus overages when they're actually trying to turn the corner and compete and want to spend money. So it's better off, and there are other reasons, there are other benefits. It helps your flexibility at the trade deadline in terms of bank cap space. It helps them potentially you know, retain salary on deals, things like that. But the big one for me is the bonuses because they don't want to get, get stuck into a death spiral where you know, by the time we're two years down the road and the Flyers want to start delving into the free agent pool and start aggressively trying to improve, they have to account for the fact that they have – $3.6 million worth of bonus overages on their cap before they can even start that because they didn't manage it well these last two seasons. That's why it's important. Uh, I think I saw today or yesterday, I can't remember, they asked about the potential of maybe one day trading that Ryan Ellis contract yeah. uh, the way they did with Chris Pronger and stuff like that. There are some teams. Rip Arizona Coyotes. Yeah, I say it are... could happen, but it's a lot harder now that the Arizona Coyotes well, aren't well, a Ponzi scheme anymore. Uh, that's what... I, Utah is one of the teams, and San Jose, we saw, like, they got a good player in Barkley Goodrow, but they're trying to get to the cap floor is one of the main reasons. They're like, yeah, man, put that dude on waivers. Doesn't matter if he doesn't want to be traded here. We just need to pay him because, like, we need to get to the cap floor. I wonder if they're going to be interested in doing something like that. If that's the case, would you, Charlie O'Connor, be willing to part with some sort of asset a late round second day pick to have them do it? Or would you just be like, screw it, just have the bonus over it? Uh, it's a good question. It's an interesting question. I don't think I would be willing to part with a pick in the top three rounds. I would probably be willing to do it for like a fourth or a fifth, but I don't okay. know if a team would be willing to do it for just that price. Like they're going to want more. Like we just saw it. What was a ridiculous trade, but it happened. We just saw Detroit pay a second round pick to get rid of Jake Wollman, 
who is a pretty solid defenseman on a not crazy contract. He's okay. So that's very like the familiar. going rate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they and, uh, and and Ottawa just traded a third round pick to get rid of Matthew Joseph, who again, not a bad player and not on a terrible contract. So if you're trying to get rid of, you know, six, what is it, six point two five for three more years on Ryan Ellis? Yeah. Like, yeah, that that's probably gonna cost it's a lot. Cost you. Mm-hmm. No, it's a it's a pretty it's not huge, but it's a fucking sizable contract. Like, and it's several more seasons. It's not like it's just yes. one or two years. It's like three, is it? So, like, yeah, it's it, three. Yeah, I was just curious uh, what your thoughts on that situation were because I saw it come up yesterday. <laughs> 